184 years after Columbus, 55 years after the first Thanksgiving, and 200 years before Custer's last stand. In the forested wilderness of New England, the growing colonial power battled the waning Wampanoags in King Philip's War. Though there were many conflicts between white settlers and Native Americans, King Philip's War stood out as an unintended consequence of English exploration and colonization, led to one of the most gruesome encounters in early American history, and in exchange for the destruction, combatants were left with nothing more than a series of lurid scars on New England's history. Prior to the war, the Native Americans and the English got along quite well by most standards. The Wampanoag Sachem, Medicom, or King Philip as the English called him, was the son of Massasoit, the Sachem during the first Thanksgiving. This peace, however, did not last, and building tensions eventually made war inevitable. First, there was the issue of land. Originally, um, the Indians had no concept of ownership of the land. Um, they, you didn't own no sky, you didn't own the air you breathe, you didn't own the land. When the Indians sold land, they didn't realize they were actually selling it. They thought they were granting the English the right to use certain portions. The English uh, would acquire the land from sachems, but the sachems really didn't own the land, it belonged to the people. In addition to the land issue, colonial livestock kept trampling native crops. The growing colonial townships were pushing Native Americans out of existence. Uh, English had the strength of numbers. We don't know exactly how many English there were in New England at that time. It's believed perhaps 50 to 50,000 English in New England, uh, perhaps 25 or 30,000 Indians. So the Indians were outnumbered. Another cause of the war was the growing Christianization of Native Americans. Uh, by 1675, uh, many of the Indians had been converted to Christianity. Uh, there were 14 praying Indian villages in Massachusetts alone. Um, all of Cape Cod was Christianized, um, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket. And the non-Christian Indians felt that they were losing their culture. Because once the Indians became converted to Christianity, they no longer owed allegiance to their sachems. Admittedly, part of the blame of the war can be assigned to Medicom, who personally held much spite towards the English. His brother had suspiciously died after a diplomatic encounter with the English colonists, and after that, Medicom never fully trusted the English. Medicom also had difficulty with the English after the Taunton Agreement. The English invited Medicom to Plymouth to negotiate on land disputes, but when he arrived, they held him at gunpoint and forced him to sign the Taunton Agreement, which not only humiliated Medicom by admitting wrongdoing on his part, but it also required that the Wampanoag surrender their weapons. In the treaty, he admits... I, having of late through my indiscretion and naughtiness of my heart, violated and broken this my covenant with my friends, by taking up arms with evil intent against them, and that groundlessly I being now deeply sensible of the unfaithfulness and folly, so desire at this time, solemnly to renew my covenant with my ancient friends. While Medicom never actually ended up surrendering his firelocks, nor fully submitting to the English, he felt bitter towards the English for making him sign this humiliating agreement. For the colonists, it was a defensive step towards peace with a potentially troublesome enemy. But to Medicom, this encounter would not soon be forgotten nor forgiven. The powder keg was set, but the final blast that would ignite the war was the death of John Sassaman. Uh, he was a Christian Indian. Uh, um, actually, he was a Massachusetts Indian. Uh, his parents were early converts to Christianity. Uh, he was from the uh, what's now Canton, Massachusetts area, uh, but his parents died when he was in 1633 when he was uh, a young teenager, and he was uh, raised uh, in an English family. He attended Harvard at some point um, as a student. We don't know how many semesters, but he could r read and write uh, English. His ability to speak and write English made him the perfect secretary for Wamsuda the previous sachem for the Wampanoags, but for Medicom, it only made him more suspicious. In January, he um, went to uh, Plymouth to warn Josiah Winslow, who was the uh, governor of Plymouth at the time, that Philip was planning a war. Sassaman was later found dead by English colonists a few months later. Whether or not he was killed by Medicom's men is debatable, but the suspicion the colonists felt was real enough for the people of Plymouth to execute three of Benicom's leading officials in Plymouth Town Square. At the same time this was happening, 
The Wampanoags and the English were in tense negotiations over the town of Swansea. The English had flat out ignored a previous agreement with Medicom and allowed colonists to settle on the town of Swansea, and Medicom was infuriated. Medicom felt that this was the final straw. On June 11, 1675, three days after the execution of the three Wampanoags, armed Native Americans were seen patrolling the town of Swansea, and three days later, on June 24th, the Wampanoags viciously attacked the town. This was the first in a series of violent and serious encounters that the war would see. Well, it was um, a war of annihilation. It was um, a full-scale war, war against, uh, it was total war in the sense it was against civilian populations. Early on in the war, Medicom allied with neighboring tribes such as the Nipmucks and the Potomacs. This made the Native Americans particularly threatening to the English, because while the English had been able to defeat the Pequots 38 years earlier, the Pequots were only one tribe. The New England colonies could not take on this threat alone. The English were able to ally themselves with the Mohicans, Massachusetts, and Nauset Indians. The war was heavily composed of gruesome guerrilla warfare. In their attacks, they raided violently and attacked indiscriminately. The Nimbucks attacked the town of Brookfield, which they burned to the ground. Overall, in the 14 months of the war, the Native American coalition completely destroyed 12 English frontier towns and severely damaged many more. Natives were not the only one to demonstrate cruelty. For example, the English took the children of the Agawam tribe hostage to keep them neutral in the war. In practice, this had a very opposite effect as the Agawams ended up joining the war anyway and burning Springfield in revenge. The colonists also had fears regarding the Narragansetts, who had been neutral in the war and were closely tied to Roger Williams. In December 1675, the colonists launched a preemptive attack on the Narragansett tribe, today known as the Great Swamp Massacre. The Narragansetts lost somewhere upwards of 500 people in this fatal attack. The war began to wind down as Medicom's fragile alliance with other Native American tribes fell apart due to English attacks. Most historians attribute the end of the war with the death of Medicom. English commander John Bishop was being guided by a Native American defector to Medicom's camp. While on the way, they saw Medicom across the river. Bishop's guide shot and killed Medicom. After his death, the natives were too fractionalized to put up a strong defense and were easily defeated. After the war, most natives moved further west to where the English had yet to settle, or to the north in French Canada. However, many were sent into slavery. Overall, the war had no true winner. For the natives, they lost a homeland, a leader, and thousands of lives. While the English did not win the war in a political sense, they lost thousands of lives, and New England's population didn't fully recover for decades. So at the end of the war, um, you had um, hundreds of disabled veterans, hundreds of orphans, hundreds of widows. Half the buildings had been destroyed. Um, not only houses and barns, but mills, which were, which were important for the economy. Um, most of the livestock had been killed. The war remains to be the bloodiest war in American history when considering the death toll as a percentage of population. The encounter was bloody and violent, and the exchange between the Native Americans and the English led to them being forced out of their homeland. While King Philip's War was not the first colonial encounter with Native Americans, and it was far from the last of the problems that Native Americans would encounter with the conquest of Europeans, King Philip's War stands out as an inadvertent result of New World exploration. Exploration into New England frontier was ruining the Native Americans, and the English had a need to expand their land holdings with their growing population. The conflict was horrific and filled with some of the most complete destruction ever seen in world history. When the smoke cleared, the English lost much colonial progress, and the Native Americans lost a homeland. At the start of the war, Medicom was quoted as saying, I am determined not to live until I have no country. Whether a radical warmonger or heroic defender of his people, Medicom undoubtedly had an impactful effect on New England's history. King Philip's War is marked as the downturn for Native Americans. They had exhausted their resources, their diplomatic influence, and all leverage over the colonists. The Wampanoags had no Battle of Little Bighorn, yet today we still must remember them and remember how a man almost brought down the downfall of New England.